So you're ready to buy a MacBook, but can't decide which one is right for you. Do you get an Air or a Pro? Or maybe you get an Air with some upgrades, but not so fast. Now you're in Pro pricing territory. So does that mean you should just go Pro? I was in the same spot as you about a year ago, torn between both of these models and all the variations in between. I ended up initially choosing the Air, but after about 11 months, I realized it wasn't the best fit for my needs, and having spent $1,000 to feel like it's not right isn't the greatest feeling. So my goal with this video is to help you avoid all of that so you can get the right Mac the first time. Whether you're a student needing a laptop that lasts through four years of college, a new creator starting your journey with video editing, or someone looking to replace a desktop with something much more portable, this video will help you find the best MacBook for your needs. I'll be covering everything from the entry-level MacBook Air to the powerhouse MacBook Pro models, so no matter what your needs or budget are, you'll know exactly which one fits you. And finding that best one comes down to a few key factors your budget, how you plan to use it. So we'll talk about things like CPU, RAM, the ports that come on these machines, your storage needs, we'll cover the SSD, and how long you want it to last, also known as how long you plan to keep your Mac, because if you know Mac, they tend to last a long time. So I'm gonna break down each of these categories so you have everything you need to make the best decision. So let's go ahead and kick things off with the number one most important thing I feel, and that is your budget. With a budget in mind, you'll have a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to specific models and how much storage or RAM you can equip them with. Looking at the entire MacBook lineup, the least you can spend buying brand new is $999, and the most you can spend is $7,199. And according to consumer intelligence research partners, 39% of all Macs sold, this includes desktop Macs, are MacBook Airs. Well, the MacBook Pro accounts for 51%. So essentially this means for every 10 MacBooks sold, four of them are MacBook Airs, five are MacBook Pros, and there is some other person walking off with a desktop Mac. Additionally, most of these users are walking off with the base model, like myself. This here is the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro chip in the space black colorway. So it is the most base model you can get in space black. These base models, along with standard configurations, are also very easy to find and quick to ship. These are also likely the models that will go on discount at some point throughout the year, but I'll talk about how to get the best deal a little later on in the video. So if that is important to you, stay tuned for that. So now that you have a better idea of how little or how much you wanna spend, next we're gonna jump into how you're going to be using the Mac so you can narrow down how you should spend that budget. So these two models right here have something in common. This is a base spec M2 Air, and this is a base spec M3 Pro. And what's crazy is that this M2 was able to do a lot of the same work as the M3 Pro. It just took longer, it got hot, and it hit a lot of swaps. What I'm saying is just because the M2 can do it doesn't really mean that it always should. How you plan to use your Mac more frequently will be a good indicator of which model and configuration you might want to lean towards. So let's say you're a college student looking for a solid machine to last you at least four years. You know 90% of your work is going to be taking notes, browsing the web, watching some Netflix on occasion, and using apps like Microsoft Office or Google Drive equivalents. These are tasks that would perform extremely well with a MacBook Air even with the most basic spec if you got the 8 gig model. On the other hand, let's say you're an engineering student and 90% of the work you'll be doing is working with models, renderings, intensive applications. Much more likely you'll appreciate the onboard fans that the MacBook Pro can offer as well as a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM to push you through those intensive applications. And even if you're not a student, you can still fall into one of three categories. Someone who's gonna be using this for basic tasks like browsing the web, some office suite, Netflix, light photo or video work. This is where a MacBook Air would be perfect. You're gonna get a ton of battery life, great performance and a super portable device. Now the next level up, this would be more intermediate use. Someone who spends more time with renders, the video edits, graphic design, 3D models and advanced photography. This is where you're gonna be teetering between a higher to max spec MacBook Air or an entry to mid-level MacBook MacBook Pro with more recommendation leaning towards a mid-level MacBook Pro or just not the absolute base spec that's going to give you 16 gigs of RAM or even the 8 gig model. I believe there is an M3 Pro without the Pro chip that is 8 gigs. I wouldn't recommend that one if you're in this category at all. And then tier 3, this would be for the power users that are looking to either replace a desktop or simply get as much power as they can out of a MacBook. And if this is you, you're probably not watching this video, but if you are, you're going to be looking at only the MacBook Pro lineup with significant upgrades to CPU, RAM, and your SSD to get as much out of the Mac as possible. And speaking of SSD, let's talk about that next. 
So how much storage do you really need? Apple charges a ton of money for their integrated storage, so unless you absolutely need to have it on board your laptop, it might be better to spend that money on an external SSD. And you can pick up a two terabyte one like this here. This is a Samsung T9 for about $200, which is $600 less than what Apple would charge you for the exact same amount of storage. And that $600 could go into upgrading your CPU or even getting something like more RAM. I personally am only running 512 gigabytes on this MacBook right here. All my video edits run straight off this T9 drive. It's fast enough to plug it into my Thunderbolt dock and it lets me do everything I need. Another benefit of the SSD is you can just go out and buy another one. So if you wanted to add a terabyte or two terabytes, you can do so whenever you need. So choosing SSD space can be much more flexible than our next topic here for your MacBook, and that is the RAM. Just like storage space with Apple, RAM is especially expensive and this time you can't buy more down the line. So unlike the SSD where you can plug it in and have access to more space anytime you want, with RAM there is no such thing where you can just go out, buy some more RAM and have your MacBook access that externally. This is a one and done from the factory, so you wanna be absolutely certain you are getting enough for your needs. And this is where I ran into issues when I got the MacBook Air. I initially got the eight gigabytes and it wasn't enough because when I was trying to export 4K videos over DaVinci Resolve, I was running heavy into memory pressure and using a ton of swap and that's why the MacBook got so hot. And if you know, if you run into swap all the time, you're borrowing storage space on your SSD that's getting offloaded on the RAM. So if you are running into swap quite a bit, especially if your memory pressure is pushing into the yellow and red zones, uh, you're likely going to burn out your SSD a little faster than you normally would if you weren't digging into swap so much. But this is where the 18 gigs of RAM on this one came in quite handy. I haven't had any issues. I do hit a little swap sometimes, but it's just a couple gigs and my memory pressure usually stays into the green or sometimes in the yellow or so areas. So it's not really that big of a deal. So my only advice for RAM here is once you have your budget set, you kind of know what area you are in, whether you're in the MacBook Air or a slightly upgraded MacBook Pro, just make sure a lot of that budget goes towards getting as much RAM as you can possibly afford, prioritizing the RAM over things like SSD or other applications that you might add later on. Just because the RAM does come in really handy, especially for longevity of your MacBook as well. The last thing you want to need is more RAM and not have it. Which brings us into our next area. So now that you have a good idea of which model fits you best, how much RAM, how much storage to equip it with, now is the time to find out how to get the best deal. And there are a few ways you can do this. Number one, you are a student. Apple for Education offers discount pricing on all their models and upgrades. There's a little tab on Apple's website. If you click that, you can go shop Apple for Education and you'll get a little discount on things like your CPU, your GPU, the SSD, the RAM. All these little upgrades have slight discounts over the MSRP pricing. So the total cost out the door is going to be a little bit less as if you were not shopping Apple for education. Number two, buying with Apple refurbished. You can save up to about 15% depending on the model. Availability is also going to be based on what's available. You're not always going to find maybe the one that you want, but it's worth taking a look to see if you can always get a little bit more Mac for your money. And each refurbished Mac is covered with a one-year warranty. So similar to the new models, you're getting a one-year warranty. So you can have a little peace of mind when it comes to buying your Mac. And number three, this is how I actually bought this one, is other resellers like b and or Adorama, there's often gonna be deals around October when they have prime big deal days or Black Friday around Christmas or certain other holidays or sometimes just randomly throughout the year, you're gonna come across a website where they're offering a discount on what's otherwise a brand new MacBook that is a current generation. And they also have deals from last generation or two generations ago. There's also some times where you can use discount codes from websites like Apple Insider. I know there's a code on Adorama where if you pop that into checkout, you'll get an additional percentage off based on the MacBook that you're buying. So these are all things to consider. Um, so you really just need to keep an eye out for deals before making a purchase. Sometimes it really can be as simple as typing into Google best MacBook deals 2024, and it'll bring up some pretty solid results. So there it is, guys. That's a pretty condensed buying guide for your MacBook. I didn't want to make it too long, but give you just enough and focus on the core areas. So establishing your budget, understanding how you're going to use it, which kind of category you're going to fall in, so you know exactly how you should apply your budget, and then really just maxing out as much RAM in that area that you can, and then anything left over on top of that, you can go ahead and upgrade things like SSD or additional peripherals or just upgrading your setup beyond that. And if this guide helped you narrow down your decision, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more tech reviews and buying guides. And if you're still unsure or have more questions, drop them down below in the comments. I'm happy to help.